the outside coming in now. This is a call at the right time. Um, please move up, move up, fill this space up. Listen, if you're gonna fucking kill each other, don't kill these people in the front row, and then they'll stay next to me, and I won't feel such a freak playing to an empty room. And trust me, you'll get a better performance, like you'll get your money's worth. So it's worth it. Um, but we are really grateful to be on this show. You know, we're grateful. Uh, so many fucking great bands have played tonight. Um, you know, it's kind of weird being here. So, one of the, the first fest I ever went to in my life was in Madison, Wisconsin in 1994. I was 18 years old. And uh, it was a two day fest, and Strife had our both days. And uh, it was. I was a, a, a spike devotee, I still am, but particularly a cute 18 year old style devotee, and I was going fucking crazy. And it was a magical experience of just seeing that energy, like, oh, this is what hardcore is. It really sort of defined it for me. And there was a photo taken during that show that I had a picture of, and it was, I was laying on my back on the stage, and Rick is straddled over the mic between us like this, and I'm just screaming at each other, just my dad sees the photo, I left it on the kitchen counter, he sees the photo, he looks at it and he's like, well, your son, what's going on in this photo? Uh, this anger you're displaying really disturbs me. <laughs> and uh, I know no real answer for that, but it's kind of surreal playing with strife this many years later, um, after they sort of inspired us and an entire generation. And actually, like, it's also weird because by no metric should we be on the show. By no metric should any of you be preparing to watch us play music. Like, um, you know, 50% of the hardcore scene has never even heard of us. Of the 50% that has, half of them hit our fucking guts. <laughs> Or just think we're too old and we should fucking, like, why did we ever pretend to come back? Um, you know, we play, like, blast beats and double bass and, you know, death metal pops and, like, it's not cool music. It's not fun. We're never been the cool guys with the right haircuts and, you know, like, representing all the things that were trendy at the time. Um, we also decided to scare every white person in the audience, which is not really a way of... You clap now, it wasn't always a popular stance. So, what, what the fuck are we doing playing with Strife celebrating one of their classic records and being in front of you? And the reason is very simple, I think. We as a band believe that this thing that we're doing here, it's not music, it's not show, it's not entertainment. At its best, the thing that we call punk, hardcore, whatever you want to call it, at its best, it's a form of cultural resistance. It's a form of, it's a form of music or expression. society that we're exploring. And that's why we're here today. And again, we're not a popular band, nobody, most people don't give a shit, but the people who give a shit have given us a platform, and some of them are in this room today. So Clint Billington, we tried a couple of our songs um, from last year, and that was a real honor, and we thank him. Um, there's a gentleman in this room called Jim Grimes, who's back this for years. And most of all, a person that shares this vision of what the ideal form of punk hardcore is, is a gentleman by the name of Shane Merrill. And Shane Merrill basically gives us this like, you know, high, high slot on his Rumble Festival because he basically wants me to say, fuck you guys, do better, we'll try to do better too. And we gotta thank Shane because he's trying to make this an elevated community. And we wouldn't be here without his support. He had our back when people had pitchforks and torches and were trying to run us out of town. And that's something we love about him. We respect about him. And everybody in this room appreciates that. Our band is called Race Trader, and this is where we're from. <laughs>
Now let me tell you something a little about my mom. My mom's standing right there. I've been playing with band over 24 years. This is the first time she's ever seen race trainer. So it's cool for me that she's here. Hey. My mother immigrated to the United States in 1973 from Iran. You might know Iran. It's the country you're supposed to be the most scared of in the entire world. No chance. They're about to poison your water and steal your children and behead your puppies. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, so I come from this background of immigrants. And, you know, my father always talked about how, you know, he's sweat for this country. He tried to make it a better place even though it wasn't the place that he was born. And as anti-immigrant sentiment, anti-Middle Eastern sentiment, anti-Muslim sentiment got higher, he said, I feel betrayed. What did I do this for? You know, in this city, ICE disappeared 20 people. And when ICE enforces immigration laws against people that are quote unquote illegal, as if a human being can be illegal, they can do it without a warrant, they can do it without an explanation, they put you in an immigration detention center, your family might even be in there with you, your fucking children, and corporations are making billions of dollars on housing those bodies of people that did what? Cross an imaginary border? made by imaginary governments to protect imaginary flags instead of fucking human beings that want a decent life, that want to take care of their kids. Yeah. Yeah. Like, why not want to do so much for me? This xenophobic bullshit needs to fucking stop. If there's one country in the entire world that has no right to fucking build walls on its borders, it's one of those borders and violence and genocide that this country did. And if we want to look at that bloody history and refer to it, this has to be a for everyone who wants to live in
by my mom and dad. Um, Donald Trump is everybody's favorite guy, I'm sure. So he just appointed this dickhead to be Secretary of State. The Secretary of State, in theory, is supposed to be the branch of the government that believes in diplomacy. But everything shows that this motherfucker doesn't believe in diplomacy at all. Like the head of the EPA doesn't believe in environmental protection. The head of Department of Education doesn't believe in teaching kids shit. Amen. So now we have an entire circle around this lunatic fucking Mango Mussolini <laughs> that all believe that the way to show America's power is through its fucking balls. I mean its bombs. Oh my God. And they're going to come to you and they're going to talk to you about how such and such country and possibly the one my grandmother lives in is such a big threat that they have to come and drop a couple bombs on it to make you safe. And they might send your uncle or cousin or something over there to do it. To make you and him safe. Or her. And we remember what happened last time. They tried to sell us a war based on fear. The entire region was destabilized, right? Another boogeyman popped up and they said, oh, now we gotta put out that fire to make you safe. Now we gotta put up this fire to make you safe. And we're gonna do it with guns and bombs and guns and bombs and guns and bombs. And they're gonna rip up the Iran deal, which is the one element of diplomacy we've seen in the United States in dealing with the Middle East for the entire lifetime of some of you in this room. Imagine that. The entire lifetime we've solved the problem for diplomacy once. And every other way we made it worse through bonds. When they come to you with that bullshit this time, you're in the fucking streets, you're saying no, you're raising your middle finger, this cannot be a nation that's entire relationship with the world is bombing fucking poor brown people. I don't want to, you don't want to, you have to say no.
ideas that we agree upon. Let's talk about how to take it outside of these rooms. I can be better. I can be better when it comes to defending communities of color, defending women against violence, defending, defending queer people against violence and discrimination. And I believe you can do better too if we talk about it.